So we're going to look at guidelines for drawing reaction mechanisms, which is covered in the organic reaction mechanisms chapter. And the first thing that we'll do is consider a series of guidelines, seven step guidelines to help us draw sensible curly arrow mechanisms. In step one, the first thing we're going to do is to draw skeletal structures of the reactants, including lone pairs on nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, and delta plus and delta minus on any polar bonds. In step two, we're going to recognize and identify any acids or bases in the reaction. In step three, crucially, we're going to ident identify the nucleophilic site or the nucleophile and the electrophilic site, the electrophile. In step four, we're going to draw a curly arrow from the nucleophilic site to the electrophilic site. In step five, we're going to recognize that a charged nucleophilic site will be uncharged in the product, whereas an uncharged nucleophilic site will have a positive charge in the product. Step six, if a new bond is made to a neutral atom, then a second curly arrow is drawn to show cleavage of a second bond, and the most electronegative atom accepts the electrons. And finally, in step seven, we're going to add any charges. The overall charge of the reactants should be the same as that of the products. So we'll now look at our first example. We're going to look at the synthesis of an ether. So we're going to react the ethoxide ion with one bromopropane to form one ethoxypropane together with Br minus. And we're going to now draw a curly arrow mechanism for this reaction following each of the seven steps. So the first thing is to draw the skeletal structures of the reactants and mark lone pairs and delta plus, delta minus. So here are our skeletal structures. Here's the ethoxide ion, one bromopropane, and the products. We're going to recognize that we've got a polar carbon bromine bond in one bromopropane, hence the delta plus, delta minus. We don't need to include any lone pairs because we've got a negative charge represented here, which indicates the lone pair on oxygen, and another one here on bromine. Identify any acids and bases. Well, potentially the ethoxide ion could act as a base in this reaction, but if you look at the products, ethanol isn't formed, so it's not removing a proton from the reactant. So therefore, we haven't got an acid-base reaction in this particular case. In step three, crucially, we're going to identify the nucleophile, nucleophilic site, the electrophile, and the electrophilic site. And in this case, it's the ethoxide ion, which is the nucleophile, this is the electron-rich site, and it's the one bromopropane, which is the electrophile. It's this carbon here, which is the delta plus carbon, which is the electrophilic site in the reaction. We're now going to draw a curly arrow from the nucleophilic to the electrophilic site, as shown here. So here's my double-headed curly arrow, taking the electron density from the oxygen, attacking the carbon. We're now going to recognize that because we're using a charged nucleophile in this reaction, the oxygen atom will become uncharged in the product because we're taking electron density away from it. In step six now, we're going to draw a second curly arrow to show cleavage of a second bond. And here it is. The electron density now is going to move from this carbon bromine bond, goes on to the most electronegative atom bonded to the carbon, which is the bromine and we land up with these two products. The final thing we need to consider is charges and the reactant. We have a negatively charged reactant and a neutral reactant, so overall one negative charge. Here at the moment, these are both neutral, so we need to put a negative charge somewhere, and the negative charge goes on this bromine because this acts as our leaving group. It accepts the electron density in the reaction, so Br- minus is the second product from this reaction. Let's look at our second example now. We're going to look at an addition of HBr to an alkene. So here is my terminal alkene. I'm going to add HBr across that alkene to give me 2-bromo-2-methylpropane. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is to draw the skeletal structures, and I'm going to mark, in this case, delta plus on the H and delta minus on the bromine. I'm now going to recognize the nucleophilic and electrophilic sites, and the alkene here, this electron-rich pi bond, is the nucleophilic site, and it's the delta plus hydrogen in HBr, which is the electrophilic site. First curly arrow now attacks from the center of the alkene, CC double bond, attacking the delta plus H. 
I'm attacking a neutral atom, namely hydrogen and HBr, so I now need to draw a second curly arrow. I'm going to take the electron density from the HBr bond and move it onto the electronegative bromine, and I land up with this these two products here. You'll notice I've put the H at the end of the chain rather than in the middle and that reflects the product that's formed from this reaction. Finally I'm going to add charges here and you'll notice that we're taking electron density away from the alkene so this carbon lands up positively charged, electron density is pushed onto the bromine so that lands as negatively charged and overall we've got two neutral reactants and overall we've got these two products being neutral overall. The final step is the negatively charged bromide ion attacks the carbocation and we form a new carbon bromine bond in the product. In the final example we're going to look at nucleophilic addition um, to a ketone, in this case um, acetone or propanone, to form this particular alcohol here. This is a two-step process. The first involves reaction of this alkynide anion and then the second step we're going to react with a proton. So we're going to draw the skeletal structures out first of all for these reactants and products and here they are. Here's the alkynide anion. I'm going to show propanone and I'm going to put delta plus on the carbon and delta minus on the oxygen in this polar bond. And here is the product from step one and then the final product from step two. The nucleophilic site in this reaction is the negatively charged alkynide anion, this one here. The electrophilic site is the delta plus carbon in the carbon R. Now I'm going to draw my first curly arrow and I'm going to show the electron density moving from the negatively charged carbon towards the electropositive carbon in the carbonyl. And then I'm going to draw a second curly arrow to show the electron density moving on to the electronegative oxygen atom. And I form this new carbon-carbon bond and I get this negatively charged alkoxide ion being formed. So that's the first step completed. Let's now consider the second step. I've got this negatively charged oxygen, which is the nucleophilic site. It reacts with a proton, which is the electrophilic site. So we just need one further curly arrow, showing the electron density moving from the minus towards the plus. We make a new OH bond in the alcohol, and overall we've done a nucleophilic addition to a ketone.